Hello everyone, I hope that you are doing good tonight. Um, we were having a few technical difficulties, but finally um, here we are um, together for this uh, this webinar on, on compassion. I pray that each and every one of you, whatever you may be watching tonight, I pray that you are doing well. Um, you will be able to communicate uh, with me uh, via Facebook, uh, on the chat, via Twitter, uh, right there. Um, if, if you look uh, to, to your right on, on the screen, you will be able to communicate with me. So as uh, we're going, if there are any questions, if you have any comments, if there is something that you would like to, to, to say to us, uh, you can you can make your comments right there. So I would like to welcome each and every one of you uh, on behalf of the Atlantic Union, Department of Adventist Youth Ministries, as well as on behalf of all of our youth directors uh, across the, the Atlantic Union. We have Pastor Roger Wade in the Northeastern Conference, uh, um, Pastor Andres Peralta in the Greater New York Conference. If we go out to uh, Bermuda, in Bermuda we have Pastor Stefan uh, Burton Schnell, um, who is the interim youth director there for a few a few more days? Uh, also, we have um, Pastor Josue Feliciano. He's a director in the Southern New England Conference, and his associate, uh, Pastor Ryan uh, Simpson. Uh, if we go to Northern New England Conference, we have uh, Pastor Harry Sabnani, and in the New York Conference, we have uh, Pastor Dan Willow. So, on behalf of all of us, uh, the Adventist Youth Ministries team of the Atlantic Union, we would like to welcome each and every one of you. Uh, to this uh, webinar. Um, I would like to know where you're uh, watching at. Uh, where are you at? Are, are you in New York? Are you in Rhode Island? Are you in Massachusetts, in Vermont, in New Hampshire, in Maine? Are you in Bermuda? Uh, uh, whatever you are, New Hampshire, you know, uh, Connecticut, please make sure that you let, us, you let us know where you are and where you're watching us from. I also want to welcome you on behalf of the youth directors of the uh, New Jersey Conference and the uh, Allegheny East Conference. As you know, next year we're having the World Initiative of New York 13, and uh, we will be participating in this uh, initiative together with the Columbia Union and the two conferences that are closest to New York, which is the uh, New Jersey Conference. Northern New Jersey youth will be participating with us on Compassion and the Allegheny East Conf Conference. So on behalf of all of us, uh, I want to welcome you to this uh, special moment, and I would like to pray as we get going uh, with this uh, webinar. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your presence with us. And I want to ask you right now to bless each and every one of the youth, young adults, leaders, pastors, everyone who is uh, with us right now in this webinar. We want to be people, a people of compassion. We want to be youth, young adults, pathfinders, college, university students of compassion. And I want to ask you to, to be with us. Holy Spirit, we need your presence right now as we talk about this most important subject for each and every one of us and for the church. In your name we pray. Amen. One more thing. I know that we have people who are uh, with us from different parts of the world right now. So I want to welcome you from wherever you are in the world. You know, I just know want to welcome the people in the New York 13 area. Not only want to welcome the people in the Atlantic Union, but if you are somewhere in the North American division, somewhere in Canada, the United States, if you are somewhere uh, in the world right now and you are uh, participating in this webinar, we want to welcome you as well. So now it's time to get to work. So... Uh, this is not a sermon. This is just a, a, a working session, a training session, an equipping session. So I would like for all of us to make sure that, that we are on the same page and that we are able to, to work together. So I'm going to sit for a little bit and then, you know, I'll stand up and sit a, a little bit back and forth. But um, feel free to take out your pencil, your, your, your notebook. If you have your computer, I'm sure you have your computer with you and you want to type right there. You know, uh, feel free to take notes. And I also want you to know that this PowerPoint will be put online uh, after this session, as well as a recording, a recording of, the, of this webinar. So let's, let's go to compassion. What is compassion? Once in a while, you're going to be able to see some of the slides that we're going to show. What is compassion? Right here, you have a, a bit of the website. Um, this is the, the entry, the portal of the website. Um, which will be uh, launched um, on January the 1st. The website will be launched. And uh, I wanted you to, to take a brief look at it. But what is compassion? Compassion is preaching with our actions. 
Because our actions speak louder than our words. Let me explain something very quickly for a few moments here. The other day, my son Jose came to me and he said, uh, Papa, come over, come over. I want you to see something. Please, uh, come over. I was talking to my wife, Joanne, and uh, I didn't pay too much attention to him. So he said again, Papa, Papa, come over. I, I want to say something. I want to show something to you. And I, and I told him, uh, baby, I'm a little bit busy right now talking to your mom. Uh, can you just tell me what it is? Tell me what it is. And he said something that touched my heart. He said, Papa, I cannot tell you what it is. It is too difficult, too difficult to tell you what it is with words. It is too difficult to explain it with words. Papa, this is so good. What I have to show you is so good. You have to see it. I told him, wait for a moment. Just tell me. And he continued to explain to me and to try to tell me and to try to, to, to make sure that I understood. Papa, you cannot hear what I have to show you. What I have to show you, you have to see it. And I want to tell you one thing. Compassion is exactly the same thing. Compassion is something that is difficult to explain with words. Because compassion, most of the time, is not done with words. It's done with actions. So sure enough, I went over to the family room where my son was uh, had been building a nice, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, Lego piece. And when I saw that, I realized that it was difficult for him to explain it with words. And the same thing with compassion. Compassion is something that is mostly seen and not as much heard. So I want to encourage you as we begin our workshop tonight. I want to encourage you. And I want to assure you that compassion is preaching with actions because actions speak louder than words. Let's continue. Compassion is a lifestyle. Compassion is a new lifestyle of a generation of Adventist youth and young adults. It is a lifestyle of a generation of Adventist youth and young adults who have the same priorities of Jesus a generation of youth and young adults who want to live a life filled with His love and His kindness kindness for humanity and all creation. I don't know if you can see it right there, but I want to tell you one thing. Compassion is something that we have for other human beings. It's something that we have for everything that God created. Compassion is a lifestyle. Let's continue. Not only a lifestyle, but compassion is a movement. And this is what we would like to see happen across of the entire northeast of the United States and Bermuda. Compassion is a movement initiated in the northeast of the United States and the islands of Bermuda with the objective to influence, teach, encourage, and provide opportunities for youth, young adults in the church and the community right here in the Atlantic Union Territory, in the New York 13 Territory, which includes New Jersey, Northern New Jersey, and also in the community, and potentially worldwide. Compassion is a movement of youth and young adults who would like to practice what Jesus lived on a daily basis. This is compassion. Let's continue. Compassion is also biblical. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 36, that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. If you go to the Bible, you can see it all over the place. Every time that it talks about Jesus and his ministry, you can tell that Jesus had compassion of the people around him. He had compassion of those that were poor. But he also had compassion of those who were rich. He had compassion of the adults. He had compassion of the youth. He even had compassion of the little kids. He said, let the little kids come to me. They were being hindered by some people. And he said, let the little kids come to me. Compassion is something that Jesus had anytime that he saw humanity. Anytime that he saw people, the Bible says that Jesus had compassion of them. He had compassion of the thin ones, the skinny ones. He had compassion of those who had a little bit more weight. He had compassion of those who were of Jewish descent. He had compassion of those, compassion of those who were Gentiles. Jesus had compassion of just about everyone that he came in touch with. So compassion is not only a lifestyle, 
It's not only preaching with our actions. It's not only a movement of youth and young adults beginning right here in the, in the northeast of the United States and Bermuda. Compassion, compassion is biblical. And quickly, let me say something. The region of the Atlantic Union is a very special region. It is a place where the Seventh-day Adventist Church was launched. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, the movement of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, began right here in the Atlantic Union. As a youth director of the Atlantic Union, it is awesome. Every single time that I travel, and I traveled in New York, I traveled in Maine, I traveled in New Hampshire, I, I come across uh, to Massachusetts where I live, because these very grounds, these very grounds, these are the places where the Seventh-day Adventist movement began. And let me tell you one thing. Um, as I think about what happened many, many years ago, when we go back to 1844, and I see a group of teens and young adults who were able to found the Seventh-day Adventist church, plant this church, and make of this church a global movement, I can only think, what would happen if you and me, Youth and young adults and teenagers and pathfinders and adventurers and college and university students in this northeast of the United States and the islands of Bermuda, if we were able to launch this movement of compassion, and just like the Seventh-day Adventist Church was a movement that began here and all of a sudden spread all over the world with the blessing of God, if this movement of compassion would be something that begins for the Seventh-day Adventist Church right here in this part of the world, and then with the blessing of God, if it would be able to spread all over the world. Compassion is preaching with our actions, because actions speak louder than words. Compassion is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of youth and young adults who uh, spend every single waking hour treating people with love and treating humanity and God's creation with love. Compassion is a movement that will begin, that is beginning right here in the northeast of the United States and Bermuda. Compassion is biblical. If we go to the Bible, Jesus practiced compassion. But not only that. Let's continue. I want to show you these wonderful quotes. Written by someone who was a young adult right here in the Atlantic Union. Ellen G. White. She was a young adult of the Atlantic Union. And I want to read these quotes because they are very important. And I want you to take a look at them. Take note of this. It says there. Let's begin reading the first one. The first paragraph. The world needs today what it needed. 1900 years ago, a revelation of Christ, a great work of reform is demanded, and it is only through the grace of Christ that the work of restoration, physical, mental, and spiritual, can be accomplished. Many times when we talk about restoration, many times when we talk about reform, we think that, that we're talking about criticizing others for what they do, for the way they sing, for how they act. But I want to continue reading here, because I want to, I want to see what, what this young adult, this former young adult of the Atlantic Union, this pioneer of our church, was trying to say. What is this work of reform that is needed? What is it? Let's continue reading. And this is a quote that you have heard many times. We talk about it all the time. We hear it all the time. But perhaps we don't practice it all the time. Christ's method alone will give you true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingle with men, and I may add women, as one who desire their good. He showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs and won their confidence. And then he bade them, follow me. Let me ask you one thing. You see what it says there. He mingled with them as one who wanted their good. He showed his sympathy. He, he always showed sympathy to, to people around them. He ministered to their needs. He won their confidence. And then he told them, follow me. Something interesting that we have done for years, and I have seen it done in our church for many years. And, and, and understand this. When I talk about our church, I'm talking about something that I love dearly. I have been an Adventist for many years, actually since I was born. And, and I have been in this church for many, many years. That doesn't make me any closer to Jesus. And it makes you, who, who, someone who just got baptized yesterday. But all I'm trying to tell you is that I love my church. But for many years, we, we do evangelistic meetings. And we talk to people. And we get close to people. And whenever we start talking to them, we tell them, follow me. Come to my church. And, and it seems that 
that we're doing things backwards. Jesus mingled with them. At times we're isolated and our, our only friends are Adventists. Uh, we need to have friends outside of our Adventist friends. We need to have friends in, in, in our schools and in our workplaces and in our neighborhoods. And we need to be able to mingle with them. We need to be able to, to mingle with them as someone who wants their good. And we need to want their good. We need to be able to show them sympathy. And we need to minister to their needs. This is where compassion comes in. And once we win their confidence, it's the time to tell them, follow me, like Jesus did. But at times we don't do any of those things that Jesus used to do at the beginning. And we just want them to follow us. And that is the reason why they don't follow. Because we have not won their confidence. They have not seen compassion in us. So let's continue reading quickly right here, the, the last paragraph. And it, there it says, There is a need of coming close to the people by personal effort. If less time were given to sermonizing, less time to talking, less time to preaching, and more time were spent in personal ministry, greater results would be seen. It is time to talk less. Perhaps I'm wondering... If it is time to just shut up for a while. It's time to be quiet. And it is time to spend some time in personal ministry. The poor are to be relieved. The sick need to be cared for. The sorrowing and the bereaved need to be comforted. The ignorant need to be instructed. The inexperienced need to be counseled. We are to weep with those who weep. And we are to rejoice with those that rejoice. And accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, and the power of the love of God, this work will not, listen up, will not, cannot be without fruit. Compassion is biblical. Compassion is something that is inspired. It's something that God wants the young people, the youth and the young adults of our time to be involved with. It's something that if we do it, it will bring great results to our church when we preach. Because if we preach without compassion, people will say, these people just have a big mouth, but they have empty hearts. But once we show our hearts, once we use our hands, once we use our feet to help others who are in need, and then we talk to them, they will realize, these people love me. These people care for me. These are people that I want to hang out with. So listen up. If we want our work of evangelism to be a blessing, if we want our words to be a blessing, we need to show a full and loving heart before we begin to speak. So compassion is preaching with our actions. It is a lifestyle. It is a movement. It is biblical. It is historical. It is inspired. And let me tell you one more thing. Compassion is something that makes sense. Quickly, let me just share this story with you. Just a few days ago, we were, um, we were working on the first Academy Service and Leadership Conference. It is something that we do with the students from our academies in the Atlantic Union. Uh, we sent out the registration, we sent out the posters, uh, people began to register, students began to register. We had a good group of students. Uh, but I realized that there were uh, one, two schools. One school had little, not many students. Then there was another school that actually uh, didn't have anybody. And I called the chaplain of the school, and I'm not going to mention the name of the school, but uh, uh, because I love all of our academies, and, and they are all great, and uh, I'm not going to mention, you know, you know what I'm talking about, guys. So I, I, I just I just called the chaplain of the school. He's a good friend of mine. And I said, uh, Pastor, and I won't tell you the name. And I said, what's going on? No one has signed up for the uh, Academy Service and Leadership Conference. Uh, it's going to be at Camp Winnipeg. And, and we sent out all the information. What, what's going on? No one from your school has signed up. And he was very honest with me. He said, Jose, let me tell you something. Our students don't seem to be interested in going to another um, seminar. They don't seem to be interested in going to another co convention. Our, our students don't seem to... They don't seem to be interested in going to sit down and just hear people talk. And I said, well, I can understand that. I, I really, you know, 
sometimes I don't really enjoy that a lot either. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I understand. So I told him, well, you know, you got the info. If someone would like to make it, just, just, just let us know. But something happened. Within a few days, a big storm, it's known as Super Storm Sandy, came. And it hit the northeast of the United States very hard. It hit the coasts of New Jersey. It hit New York, the areas of Staten Island, Far Rockaway, the entire coast of, the, of New Jersey, of the state of New Jersey. And Super Storm Sandy just devastated some areas in our Union territory. Right away, uh, with the, the leaders of the education department, because this is a joint uh, venture, uh, we started talking and we said, um, we cannot take our young people to a workshop and to a seminar and to a conference on service and leadership while there are so many people suffering in New York and in New Jersey. So perhaps we need to do something. And we as a church did something that we usually not do. This is what we did. We said... It was, it was just, you know, two or three days. We said, we need to change this. And rather than, than doing our conference on, on leadership and service, we need to turn this into a mission trip. Uh, we met, and, and uh, we met with the educators, and uh, we met with the, with the youth leaders, and, and I was a little bit hesitant, because uh, in our church, uh, we don't like to change things around, and we don't like quick change, and, and we don't like to do things fast, you know, sometimes it takes a while, and we're so structured that it takes a long time to do things, and, but we met. The, the conference was be, supposed to begin on Thursday. And we met uh, on Monday with the education leaders through the phone. And then on Tuesday, we had a conference call with all of the education leaders, the uh, academy principals, and, and the, the, my colleagues from education here in the union, some of our youth directors. And, uh, and we talked about the possibilities of changing. And rather than doing a conference, uh, I can't win a keg, you know, doing a mission trip. As soon as we decided that the mission trip was going to take place, something interesting happened. Right after we finished our conference call, the, the chaplain from the academy that had no one going called me up and said, Pastor Jose, uh, listen, uh, mission trip to New York, we want to go. Our kids are very interested in going. And I said, how many people do you have? This is within one hour. He had 14, 15 people who wanted to go right away. Another academy that didn't have too many people coming and called me and said, uh, Pastor Jose, uh, rather than 12 people, now we have 24 that want to go. Uh, all of a sudden, within, within two or three hours, the registration for the academy service and leadership conference, uh, which was good, all of a sudden it doubled when the young people realized that we were doing, that we were doing a mission, that we were actually going to do a ministry of compassion, that we were going to New York to help the people in need. All of a sudden, the registration doubled. So, all I'm trying to tell you is that compassion makes sense. Compassion is something that young people want to do. Young people are tired of sitting, sitting in our, in, in, in our pews and uh, sitting in church and, and just listening to people talk. All the time. Young people want to do something on behalf of others. Young people want to do compassion. So compassion is not only a lifestyle. Compassion is not only preaching with our words. Compassion is not only a movement that is beginning right here in the northeast of the United States. Compassion is not only biblical. It's not only what Jesus did. Compassion is not only historical. It's not only what one of our pioneers and prophets is telling us that we need to do. Compassion makes sense if you're working with young people. Dear Pastor, if you're listening to me right now and you're, you're watching this we webinar, uh, please do not hinder your young people from doing compassion. Compassion will help to keep your young people in the church and at the same time will bring many others, many others that don't know about Jesus yet, will bring them to Jesus because of their ministry, because of their actions. Compassion makes sense. I, I hope, I hope, I'm, I'm getting a little preachy here, guys, and I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing this, but listen... I am passionate about this. I think that this is something that together we can do it. With my youth, the, the, the youth directors of the Atlantic Union and all of our young people in the Atlantic Union, if we decide that, that this is something that we want to do, this can be something great, not only for our young people, not only for our church as a whole right here in the Atlantic Union, but this can be something awesome for the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. Compassion 
is something that is needed today. Let's continue. Let's continue. If not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit too preaching here. So, how do we make compassion work? How do we make it work? What can we do to make sure that compassion works? Quickly, let me tell you this. Compassion is not an event. We want this to be a lifestyle. We want this to be a personal lifestyle. So quickly, let's go over a few of the things that we will do. A few of the things that we want to do in order to facilitate the personal lifestyle. In order to facilitate this movement. Because no movement takes place with everyone going at it at once. Com a movement takes place by everyone. One person, person by person beginning to have some radical changes in life. So a movement cannot take place if you personally don't do anything. So what can you do personally? How are we going to help you? What can we do in order to make sure that we live a 24-7, uh, 365 days a year uh, lifestyle? Number one, we will inspire and equip you. We have a website which will be launched at the f on the first day of January, January 1st, it will be launched. And there, we're going to help our youth and young adults. We're going to help you to, to live a life of compassion. How are we going to do this? We're going to inspire. We're going to inspire and we're going to equip you. Every single day, there will be a Bible verse on compassion to inspire you. Every single day there will be quotes, daily quotes, a quote on compassion um, to inspire you. Because when you do a radical change, it is not, it is not easy to, to keep it up. So it is important, it is important that uh, when you're doing compassion, that, that you're inspired every single day. So we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to, we, we're also working on ways of finding a, a text, a, a way of sending text to those who signed up. So that way uh, you can, if, if you don't look it on the website, you can look at it on the text. And we're also working on an application, an app. So that way you can have it right there. You know, we know that a lot of you don't go to your uh, computers anymore, that you do most of your um uh, web browsing and, and most of your internet connections and most of it you know it through you do it through your m uh, mobile so we want to make sure we want to make sure that uh, that all of those things are available available to you every day there will be a tip every day there will be a tip daily tips on what can you do for compassion and quickly, quickly, I would like for those of you who are watching there, those of you who are following the webinar, uh, I would like for you to type in, give me an idea. Give me an idea. I, we need help. You know, there is a team that will be working on this, you know, and, but, but we need some ideas. So why don't you give me some ideas right away? Um, type in right there on the chat room on, on, the, on Facebook or Twitter. Send me a few ideas of what can you do on a daily basis. What can you do on a daily basis? Give me one. Give me one. Uh, something like, uh, smiling to everyone that I see, smiling to everyone that I that I see, something like asking people, "How are you doing today?" There are people that no one ever talks to. There are people who are so lonely, and having someone who talks to them will be will, will make a, a big difference. I remember something that my wife did. My wife and my kids did something uh, uh, about uh, two years ago. They did something that that blew my mind. It was it was very nice. I woke up. It was Valentine's Day, December uh, February fourteenth. And I woke up and I, he I heard noise, you know, and the noise was familiar. Uh, every single time, you know, in the morning, uh, at least twice a week, the, the uh, trash collectors will pass by the, with a truck and they will collect the trash in our neighborhood. But this time, I hear the trash, I hear the, the, the trash collectors picking up trash cans and all that stuff. But all of a sudden, I hear outside of my house, we lived in Long Island, New York at the time, I hear my wife and my kids, they're out, they are out there. So from the second floor, I look through my window, and I see that my wife and my kids, it's like 6.30 in the morning, guys. My wife and my kids are running after the trash collectors. And I see them calling out to them and saying, hey, hey, hey. And, and I hear my wife, and I'm wondering, like, what happened? Why are my wife and my kids running after these people? And all of a sudden, when the guys stop, it was two guys, I see that my wife and the kids... Gave him something. It was like a little bag with something, you know. 
and I saw the biggest smiles, you know, on, on, on both of the trash collectors, you know, faces. And then my wife and my kids said something. I couldn't hear what they were saying. There was a noise on the truck and everything. But they said something and then they just walked away. I noticed one thing. The trash collectors actually put the trash can where it goes, where it actually belongs, you know. Because they usually when they pass by and they collect the trash, they just throw them all over the place and you have to go, you know, get your you know, trash can down the street. But I realized that they were right there. You know, they put it right there where it's supposed to go, in the same place where they picked it from. I went downstairs. I asked my wife and my kids, what, what do you guys do? You know, and they just told me something simple. We just went out there. Gave him a little package, a little gift bag with chocolates inside. And we told them that we really appreciate and we love what they do for us every week. That's compassion. Treating people who usually get overlooked or mistreated or they get looked at funny because they work with trash. Treating them with love and with a smile. Compassion is serving others with love. Service wrapped in love. So service wrapped in a smile. Service wrapped with a touch. That's compassion. So, please give me a few ideas. Type them in. Send them to me. Well, these ideas, don't be surprised if you see them as, as one of the daily tips. We're going to use them. Send them to us. Not, not only that, but we're going to create weekly Small group lessons. Every week we want to have a blog and we want to have a small group lesson. So you can study. If you have a small group, you can do it with your small group. If you, have a, uh, if you don't have a small group but you have a Pathfinder Club, you can study it with your Pathfinder Club and use it as your weekly devotion. You know, these are things. These are things that we will be able to do. Small group. Lesson, a weekly blog, daily Bible verses, daily quotes, and daily, daily tips. These are things, these are things that we want to do in order to make sure that you're living that personal lifestyle. Let's continue. Compassion is not only, it's not some, something that happens uh, personally in your lifestyle, but it's also something that happens in your church, in your group. And in your club. Okay? Quickly, let's go through this. And I hope that you're taking uh, notes. I hope that, that you're taking, you know, we have a few minutes left. Uh, but I hope that, that, that you're, getting, you're getting the point. If you have any questions, please uh, send them our way. Uh, we have someone who is there um, um, replying, replying to your questions. And uh, we would like to, to address them at some point. Compassion is something that you can also do with your youth group with your young adult group, with your Adventist and Christian Fellowship. Adventist Christian Fellowship, that's the ministry for college and university students. Uh, compassion is something that you can do with your Pathfinder uh, Club. It's something that you can do with your Adventurer Club. It's something that you can do with your AES Corp. or with your Adventist Medical Cadets. Let me, let me be very clear, everyone. Uh, together with the youth directors of our, of our union, we have come to a point in which we just don't want to do ministry for the sake of doing ministry. We just don't want to go through the, through the motions just for the sake of doing motions. Uh, we just don't want to do meetings for the sake of meetings. If it is not blessing somebody, if it is not, not uh, comforting someone, if we're not touching someone, it does not deserve to be done. Make sure that every single thing that you do, that at some point you put service and compassion into it. In other words, pathfinders is, are great. And we, we have our kids work so they can get patches. I have so many patches. I have so many honors. Adventurers are great. We have so many. AY Society is so nice. And, and you know, uh, and I know it's not working well in some of your churches. But there are some churches where it works, you know. And, and, and people do the program every day. And, 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 and you do the, 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 the skit. And then you do the, the Bible verses. And you do the songs. And... But stop going through the motions just for the sake of going through the motions. Begin to do things that have a purpose. If it's not touching someone, if your ministry is not touching people who need Jesus, if your ministry is not showing compassion to others that need it, then it is no ministry. 
So please, Pathfinder Directors, if you're watching me right now, you're a Pathfinder Director. Patches are important. But leading people to Jesus and touching people with compassion like Jesus did, that's even more important. Make sure that you involve, include compassion together with your Pathfinder meetings. Adventure, make sure that you, Director, Adventure Director, make sure that you involve, include compassion with your Adventure meetings. If you are at a, at a college or university, there are lots of kids in colleges and universities right now across of our union who need a lot of help. A lot of them have a lot of money, but they need love. They need to be touched. They need to be ministered by somebody. They need someone to show them sympathy. Um, colleges and university campuses are the perfect place for compassion ministry. Let's make sure, let's make sure that we include and, and put compassion into every single thing that we do. Stop doing ministry just for the sake of doing ministry and begin to do a ministry with purpose, a ministry that has compassion in it. Let's continue quickly. And I want to I wanna bring you to a very important initiative. We're doing this because we can talk about it all we want. But if we don't practice it, it will never become a habit. You need to do things many times in order for them to become a habit. So, Compassion is a personal lifestyle. Daily, you need to get encouraged. Daily, you need to see those tips. Daily, you need to practice compassion. And eventually, it will be natural. But as a church, as a club, as an ACF group, as a young adult group, as a teen group, there is something that we would like to put into place across the entire Atlantic Union. We have declared, together with all of our youth directors, and it has been voted uh, by all of our youth directors and by our team, that every single second Sabbath, every second Sabbath of every month, beginning with January 12th, all the way to December 14th, every single second Sabbath will be Compassion Sabbath. What does that mean? You go to church in the morning, you do every single, every, everything that you do in the morning, but that second Sabbath, that second Sabbath of the month, in the afternoon, you dedicate it to compassion. Please make sure, make sure that you put that in your calendars. Mark it in your calendars. Every second Sabbath, every second Sabbath of the month, across the Atlantic Union and the New York 13 area, the young people of the Adventist Church will be doing compassion. There will be thousands, thousands, I'm talking about 30, 40,000. If every single church does it, if every single club does it, every single second Sabbath of a the month, there will be 30, 40,000 youth and young adults in the entire northeast of the United States and Bermuda doing a ministry of compassion. Don't you think that would be awesome? Isn't that an awesome vision to have young people all over this territory doing compassion, treating someone with love? Mark in your calendar, please. Mark in your calendar. It's important. It's important that, that this gets done. And remember, as you begin to do it, as you begin to do it, it becomes natural. It becomes natural. Once you've done it a whole bunch of times, then you cannot live without it. And this is what we want. We want to create that generation, that generation in the Seventh-day Adventist Church that is used to be a generation of compassion. We live it in our daily lives, and then we do it together with our friends and those who are who are around us in the church. And for that, we're going to help you. We're going to help you. Take a look at that screen. Uh, in our website, the website that will be launched very soon, January 1st, January 1st, 2013, we will have Tips for Compassion. We will call this day Compassion Sabbath or Compassion Day. And let me tell you why. Uh, Compassion Sabbath sounds good to all of us who are Adventists. Because we, we love the Sabbath and we keep the Sabbath and everything. But compassion is also a tremendous idea to keep your friends, those who are not from church, those who are from school, from the workplace, from the university, and even for other churches in the neighborhood who are not Adventists. Compassion is an excellent idea to reach out to them. You know, everyone wants to do compassion, even those who are not Adventists, even those who are in the workplace, even those who are at your school, they want to do compassion because they care about other people. And if you invite them to come to church, they might never want to come to church. But if you, if you invite them to, to come out with you, with your group, and do compassion, they might just love that and come with you. And this might be a way of introducing them to your wonderful message, to our wonderful message. I'm not making myself clear. 
Okay, so very quickly here, I want to I want to share this with you. The Compassion Sabbath will take place every single second Sabbath of the month. There will be tips, two or three tips that will be on the website for each month. So that way you have things that you can do and you can be creative. But right now, think of something. Think of, think of something that, that you can do and please send it my way. You know, type it right there on the chat room, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Just put it there for me so that way I can I can see what it is. You know, uh, we we might use some of those ideas. There is a team that is being led by Denise Stokes. Uh, she's uh, someone who has been involved with uh, with ministry and outreach for for several years. You know, she knows a lot about this thing, and and she will be leading a team. Uh, Compassion Day team. She will be leading, and she's the one that will be responsible together with her team for for putting these uh, tips and these ideas forward. So, if by any chance you like to help Denise out and you like to be part of this team, feel free, feel free to to email Denise. Her email is right here. Um, I don't know if you can see her email. Um, uh, if her email is right there, so maybe we can we can put it right right now on the screen for a moment. Do we have it there? Okay, you guys can see it right there, and uh, and that way um, you can you can uh, share with her, share with her quickly, quickly. Let me go back quickly because we also have a team that will be helping out. We'll be hel- helping out with personal lifestyle, the personal lifestyle team, and Joan Cortez. Yes, that's Joan Cortez. Uh, that's my gorgeous, not beautiful, but gorgeous, gorgeous wife. Uh, She's going to be leading the team uh, in the area of personal lifestyle. Okay, if you like to help out with that team, if you like to send her some good ideas, you can see her email right there uh, as well. So uh, that's uh, a few of the things you know that that we want you to uh, remember and think about as we as as, as we continue uh, with the webinar. Quickly, and we're coming to the end. I'm not going to keep you here past 9:30, but quickly. Let me share a little bit about compassion in the conferences. We've talked about compassion, compassion in our personal lives. We've talked about compassion uh, in our groups, in our churches, and everything. Uh, now, um, take a look at this slide. Uh, a lot of your conferences, a lot of our conferences in the Atlantic Union, as well as in New Jersey, Allegheny East, uh, they're, they're doing compassion. You know, uh, the I Serve movement, you know, uh, Northeastern Conference, Allegheny East are participating with that. I know Impact. Impact is something that the Southern New England Conference has been doing successfully for the last few years. Uh, the Greater New York Conference has done God City, My City. This year, they are doing connected to connected to God, connected to the church, connected to the community. And, and all of this involves uh, compassion. The New York Conference, the Northern New England Conference last year did, did some great things, you know, with the Pathfinders right after Irene, the hurricane passed through Vermont, you know. So this has been done. So things like that will continue to happen conference wide. Okay? And, and your conference youth directors will be in touch with you in regards to that. But now, I want to come to you, uh, to you with uh, one, one more initiative. Something that will happen once a year. This will happen once a year. And this year, 2013, this upcoming year, it will happen in New York. Once a year. Once a year, we would like to have an annual Compassion Rally. This will be a weekend. Where together, we're going to descend on one city, one city of our territory. Descend on that city, and there will be youth and young adults from every single conference. You know, the young people from Bermuda will make it. The young people from Maine will make it. The young people from Massachusetts will make it. You know, and this 2013, it will be in New York City. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Five to seven thousand youth and young adults, pathfinders, adventurers, you know, people from all over the union coming down to New York City to do ministry. Mark this date on your calendar. March 22nd through the 24th, 2013. That will be our compassion, compassion rally for 2013. What will happen during that weekend? We will have many different projects in the city, throughout the city. 
There will be projects in soup kitchens. There will be projects in parks. There will be projects with uh, clowns for kids, you know, uh, painting uh, kids' faces. There will be uh, projects in the subway. Yeah, that's the metro, the metro stations. Uh, there will be so, uh, uh, projects in the university campuses. There will be projects in shelters for, for women, better women. And there will be projects. There will be one of the projects will involve spending the night in the streets with the homeless. This will be one of the projects that will be uh, involved here. There will be many, many different projects. There will be a flash mob, you know, uh, uh, exemplifying compassion to the people in a very busy uh, place. Uh, there will be the donating um, blood, you know, uh, in, in many different places. There will be doctors and nurses, you know, uh, helping people out with their health. There will be many different projects. You will be able to sign up for the projects online. You will be able to, with your group, every group will have a leader, and you will be able to sign up. So on that, on that uh, weekend, you will be able to do some compassion, especially on the Sabbath. It will be a beautiful, beautiful day. During that weekend, everyone who signs up will get a compassion t-shirt. So all of us will walk around all over the city with our compassion shirts. Okay, if it, if it is a, a little cold, perhaps, you know, we'll put something, o something underneath and we'll put our, our shirts on top. But everyone will have that compassion shirt, everyone who signs up. And it is a weekend to use public transport. The transportation in New York is very, very good. Uh, uh, when we use public transport, everybody can see us. If we are in our van, in our bus, you know, uh, the only people who get to see us are ourselves, you know. Uh, and this is not a conversation we want to have with ourselves. It's a conversation that we want to have with everybody out, out there. So we want everybody to see that compassion. And we're going to go around and just do compassion throughout the city. In 2013, we'll be the city of New York. We're going to finish. We're going to finish uh, on Sabbath afternoon, Sabbath evening. We're going to finish by gathering in one place. And we're working on, on this right now, getting the permits and the whole works, you know. But gathering in one place, we're thinking perhaps Central Park and doing a candlelight march. And, and don't worry about getting burned with a little candle, you know. Uh, we're going to have candles uh, that have battery, battery operated candles. So that way you don't get the, 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 how do you call that thing? I'm sorry guys, English is my second language, but how, how, the wax. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. You know, uh, so we can, you don't have that wax coming down your, your, your hand. You know, we're going to have battery operated candles and we're going to have a candlelight march, perhaps, you know, from Central Park all the way to the United Nations. They will make a big circle. Thousands of young people will have a prayer for the city, for the world, and then we'll go. During this Compassion Weekend, we're not going to be uh, having services. There will be no preaching. The preaching will not be with our tongue or with our mouth. The preaching will be with our actions. How about that? What do you think? Is this something that you can all get behind? You know, is this something that we can do? Can you envision that? Thousands of young people in one city doing compassion? It will be awesome. In 2014, in 2014, we're going to be in Portland, Maine. In 2015, we're going to Hamilton, Bermuda. That is right. Hamilton, Bermuda. In 2016, we're going to Worcester, Massachusetts. And in 2017, 2017, we're going to be in the Syracuse or Rochester area in New York, upstate New York. So these are things that are very important that I need you to mark down in your calendars. And uh, we're going to keep you posted, but especially make sure that you put the, that date, you know, I don't know if we can put it back there again uh, on the, on the screens, but uh, March 22nd through the 24th, 2013, it is a very important one. Mark it in your calendars. We want to make sure. We want to make sure that that you are that that you are present with your youth group. Okay. Something else. Something else that I want to I want to tell you about this this special this special weekend. We don't want this to be something very expensive. We don't want this to be something very expensive. So uh, check check this quickly. Uh, you don't have to get hotels. I mean, if you have the money to stay in a hotel and you want to, uh, you can do that. Uh, for this, we want the groups that come from other places in New York to stay in churches. To get connected to churches, uh, to stay at a local church, to stay at one of our schools. We have plenty of schools, you know, with nice big gyms in, in New York City uh, and, and the area surrounding it. So, uh, all you have to do is get down there, you know, and there will be a place to host you, a place where you can stay, that way you don't have to spend lots of money uh, in, in your 
in, in your lodging. Okay? And quickly, let me show you this very quickly so that way you can, you can see it. The Compassion Project team in New York uh, is headed by Aurora Sandoval. Aurora Sandoval, by the way, is, uh, is doing uh, something awesome right now. She's she's one of the coordinators right down there together with Walter Harris, who is also doing an awesome job in New York, together with uh, Fitzgerald Kerr from the Northeastern Conference, uh, you know, uh, Ruben Marino from Greater New York Conference, uh, the youth departments, Pastor Wade and Pastor Peralta. They are doing great work right now uh, taking care of the those affected by the, by the storm, by the superstorm. Okay, and Aurora will be uh, heading the team it will be a team of people, but she'll be heading the team that will be working on the projects in New York. So if you would like to be part of that team and you would like to support with that team, you can get in, in, in touch with uh, Aurora. Uh, that's right, Queen Vasti. You know, Aurora, uh, Queen Vasti at Yahoo.com. And the hosting team, the Compassion hosting team in New York City will be headed by uh, Diana Lambert, Diana Lambert of the Northeastern Conference. So these two ladies will be working with their teams. One of them will be uh, working on hosting. The other one will be working on uh, the projects. All of the projects will be listed online. You will be able to sign up for all of your projects. Uh, that's something, information that will be coming to you. It will be on our Compassion website. So that's something that we want to make sure we want to make sure that that, that you that that you're clear you're clear with something else that will happen during 2013. As you know, the Worldwide Seventh Day Adventist Church is working on this special initiative. And New York City is a place where the entire world is paying attention to next year. So next year, let me tell you one thing: people from all over the United States will be coming to our Compassion Rally. You know, there will be university students from all over the United States, young adults that will be coming to the Compassion Rally. There will be 15 people, at least 15 that I know of, from every single field in the world. There are uh, 13 uh, world divisions, you know, in Europe and in Africa and in South America and in Inter-America. We have at least one young adult from each one of those, including one young adult from Israel, you know, and from other places that will be coming to spend six months with us in New York City. They will be learning how to do ministry, how to do ministry in the in the in the New York City area, in the in the in a metropolitan area, in an urban setting. And and they will participate with us in compassion because this is something that they want to take out there. Something that they want to take out there to to, to the rest of the world. So uh, this is something that will be big and we want each and every one of you and your young people to be involved involved in it. Quickly, as we get ready to close, I want to give you some wise counsel. Uh, you've, you've heard this, you know, you have been uh, here listening and watching this, the, this uh, webinar and you're wondering, well now I go back to my local church and I don't know if they're going to give us permission for this. Number one, work with your local church pastor. The pastors are the keepers of the gate. Okay? If your pastor does not support it, it's very difficult that this will happen. But I am a pastor. And I know my colleagues out there. Uh, our pastors, they would like to see something happening with our young people. It, it can be that at times, you know, uh, some of our colleagues are not in with every single thing that we do, you know. Uh, at, at times we're a little bit too innovative, uh, it may be. But let me, let me be very clear. Let me be very clear. If you work with your pastor, you start talking to your pastor from now. You start talking to your pastor about the idea of having the second Sabbath of the month as a compassion Sabbath and then the rally. Um, I doubt that your pastor will have anything against it. Your pastor will be very supportive. I am almost sure that your pastor will be very supportive. So begin to work with your pastor, with your elders. Present the plan to the church board. This is something that will bless the church. This is something, if the young people are doing compassion out there in the neighborhood, when the brothers and sisters that do Bible studies and do small groups go out there, they have already find fertile territory. Because our young people have already been out there and they have treated them with love. So I, I am sure that this can, be a, this can be a blessing to the evangelism of your local church. Talk with your pastor. Work with your pastor. Remind your pastor and your church board that when you do compassion, it helps to keep your young people in the church. Young people don't want to be sitting down all day. 
Young people don't want to be sitting down all the time. Young people are not interested in always sitting down to listen some, to somebody else say something. Young people want to do something. So remind this to your, your, your congregations. And I am sure your pastors are going to be very, very appreciative of this. Number one, compassion keeps your young people in the church. So we all want to keep our young people in the church. Number two, compassion helps the community. Compassion helps the church to have a good name in the community. Compassion helps to bring people in the church. So, you see, a few, a few reasons. Compassion helps to keep your young people in the church. So, it's, if, we, if we could, we could say it is kind of selfish to a point. But compassion helps those who are in need in the community. Compassion helps the church to have a good name out there. Because when you're doing good things for the community, people think highly of you. Okay? And this is not the reason why we're doing it. We're doing it because we want to help. We're doing it because we want to show the love of God. But, but sometimes when you're showing, when you're presenting this to the church board, it is important that they see the benefit to it. And last but not least, compassion will help to bring others to the feet of Jesus, to baptism in, in your local church. So make sure that you involve and you work with your pastor, with your church board. Number two, make sure that you involve your youth. Young people love doing this type of thing. Going out, giving water, to people who are thirsty, giving food to people who are hungry, going out during Christmas and giving toys to kids that didn't receive anything, um, going to a campus, you know, uh, where th there are people who are hungry uh, and there are the students that didn't have enough money to, to go um, uh, home for, for, the, for the break and, and, and giving out some nice food and some, you know. Uh, these are things that young people enjoy doing. So involve your young people. Involve your church. If adults want to participate, involve, uh, involve the adults, you know. Uh, it is great when young people and adults can work together. We're not here to fight. We're here to work together. So uh, this is an official policy of the Atlantic Union. Young people and adults, we don't fight. We work together. Can you imagine young people and adults working together, blessed by the Holy Spirit? The sky is the limit with the things that we can do, you know. And last but not least... Check this out. Let's, let's put the slide back there. Involve other churches in the community. In other words, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If there is a Baptist church down the road, invite them to, to, to participate with you on that second Sabbath of the month for compassion. Invite them to come down with you to, to New York City. To, uh, and you know, this is not the time to, to, to discuss religion. This is not the time to discuss doctrine. This is just the time to do compassion together. Just do compassion together. It might be a great outreach. Do compassion together with the Baptist church. Do compassion together with the Catholic church right down the street. You know something? This might be the one tool, the one method that God uses to bring those young, spe those young people from, from those churches down the street closer to your young people. And perhaps one day they might be interested in what you have to offer. How about that? You know, we are not an island. You know, we are to work together with others. So make sure that you involve all the churches in the community, even if they are not of the same faith. Involve them in compassion. And you will see, you will see the great results. And I close with this. I close with this. It is 9.30, you know. Oh, actually, man, I was going by, I was going by this one. Guys, listen up, listen up. It's not my fault. Uh, uh, Ellie, I don't know if you can. I was going by this by this one here, and it says here 9:30. Okay, so this is I I am done, guys. This is this is this is it. But then my watch here says 9:35, so I don't I don't know which one is right. But but if you're still there, just listen to me for a moment. I, I am I am almost finished here. Let's go to uh, this next slide here. It's, it's one of the last ones uh, about marathons. Marathons uh, is is something that we have worked on, and together with the young people and the youth leaders. We recently had a meeting at Cambridgeshire with all of our, uh, our leadership council of the Atlantic Union, and we decided that this is something that we want to get involved with. Um, marathons are a way of showing interest for your city, for your community, and showing compassion for those who are running. Okay? Uh, we would love to have Adventist youth and young adults volunteer for marathons across the northeast of the United States. This, this year, um, we had over uh, 700 volunteers to participate in the New York City Marathon. Of course, with the storm, you know, um, the, 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 the marathon was canceled and we couldn't have it. But the interesting thing is that all of those young people 
uh, that had volunteered for the marathon somehow came out and volunteered to help the victims uh, of the of the storm. So so it ended up working out. But we would like to begin to volunteer in the cities so so people can see us around the cities, you know. And and there is one thing that I want to show you that we did for everyone who volunteered for the marathon. Uh, everyone who volunteered for the marathon, we gave them uh, this nice vini. Uh, bini, bini. I'm sorry, English is my second language, as you know. And I am closing, guys. It says compassion. And it has the logo of compassion. Okay? Uh, compassion right here. On the other side, it has the logo of Adventist Youth Ministries in the Atlantic Union. We want to do this, and we want to continue doing this with everyone who volunteers in marathons. So we're going to have it in New York City. But if we could have a marathon in Boston, you know, you let us know. Uh, organize volunteers. And everyone who volunteers, we want to give them something like this because uh, volunteering, volunteering in marathons is also a part of compassion. You know, it would be nice to have one in Portland, Maine. And, and if you let us know, we'll work on it together. And we let everybody know so people from New York can come to Boston. And people from Boston can go to New York. And people from Portland can go to New York. You, you know what I'm talking about. So we can work on these things together. And we will provide these ones. You know, they actually, they actually look pretty pretty nice well i don't know if i should put it on right now let's see you know uh, you know they look really really nice really nice and uh, they also talk about what we're doing together with the ministry ministry of compassion so everyone i'm coming i'm coming to the end of it i hope that you have been able to to take notes i hope i hope you have been able to get the orientation of what compassion is all about. And I hope that you're ready to join uh, me and to join your youth director. And our team of youth directors, we're together in this. We know that um, that each and every one, you know, has a vision. We know that every church has ideas. But uh, the time has come to, to stick together. If we're not together, we cannot be strong. Uh, as an Adventist church in the Atlantic Union, the New York 13 area, we're meant to be strong. We have thousands thousands of young people. Can you imagine if all of us join forces together and we do compassion, what God can do through us? So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to join this movement of compassion, to stick together with us. Quickly, before we go, let me tell you, we have a Facebook group. It's called Compassion. I'm going to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a Facebook group, Compassion. Um, uh, our website will be open soon. The Facebook group is Compassion. If you cannot find it, just just you can you can go to the Atlantic Union Youth website. We're going to put a, a link to it. But we want to make sure that each and every one of us, all of us, are together in this, and that we know what's going on, that we uh, are know what uh, that that we know what's what's happening, and that together we get to participate. And before I close with prayer, let me tell you one last thing. We're in need of helpers in New York City. Pastor Ruben Marino sent me an email saying, Pastor Jose, during the weekend we have lots of volunteers because all of our young people, adults, the churches, they are able to help during the weekends. But during the week, we're needing help. So if you live outside of the New York City area, you know, and, and you and your group, you're watching us somewhere in the United States or Canada, somewhere in the Union, and, and you can organize a group to come to New York City and help for one week, it will be excellent. Get in touch with us. We'll give you the, give you the information. They have a place for you to stay. They're going to help, help to feed you. All you have to do is get there uh, because there is a need. There is a need of uh, uh, tremendous work to be done during the week. So everyone, may the Lord bless you. And may you have compassion. Before I go, one last thing. As you can tell, this is the, this right here. This is the logo for compassion. Right here. I don't know if you can see it right here on my shirt. It is right here. I would like to have as many pictures as possible of young people. Because we want to put them in our website. We want to use them to, to promote the ministry. Um, if you can send me pictures of your young people, your youth groups, uh, send them to our email. You know, uh, put them on Facebook. Um, pictures of your young people going like this, you know, and doing the, the, the compassion signal. I would really appreciate that. 
Remember one thing. When Jesus comes in the clouds of glory, you know what he's going to say? For as much as you did it to the least of this, you did it unto me. May the Lord bless you. And may the youth and young adults of the Atlantic Union be youth and young adults, be a generation, a new generation of compassion. I love you guys. Take care, we'll see you. And remember, compassion. Bye bye. Si quita, si quiere. ¿Está? Good. ¿Qué te parece?